getting signed nowadays is way different than what it used to be. The industry is changing. And so um, basically, we used to just kind of hope to get noticed, right? And then uh, and then people who work at the record label called a &R Guys, they would find you and they would, you know, say, you're, you're great, you know, here's a ton of money to make your dreams come true, right? That's kind of like the, uh, the vision that we all have about getting signed to a record label, but it's not like that anymore, unfortunately, right? Now, the record label expects you to have all the fans and expects you to do all the work ahead of time. It's like an investment. Record labels invest in artists, and when, uh, when making an investment, whether it's in music or whether you're investing in a company in the stock market, you want an investment that's going to bring a return, right? It's all about money, right? Record labels want to get their money back. And so when looking for new artists, they're going to sign people who are very, very, very promising, meaning they already have a huge fan base. They already have the look that they're going for. They already have kind of all the ducks in a row, right, so to speak. And uh, those are the people who they'll spend money on because, yes, you can do it all in independent now, you know, like Chance the Rapper, right? He's, he's crazy. He's awesome. But what a lot of people can't do without label backing is get on the radio, you know, make really expensive music videos. So you still need labels, right? And Limebold, we're an independent label. We, you know, kind of do it all, you know, from uh, the ground up, just like any other independent label. But I'm talking about the labels like Capital, you know, the ones with budgets. They're the ones that uh, are going to get you on pop radio, they're the ones that are going to basically bankroll your career, right? So we're talking about getting noticed by those people. Point number one is you have to give yourself a strategic advantage in the music industry, right? So basically you have to be good. You have to be the best, right? But you don't have to be the best at everything, okay? So don't freak out and say, you know, I'm not the best guitar player. I'm not the best songwriter. That's okay. You don't need to be the best at everything, but you do need to have a strategic advantage in some area, right? And so what that could be is you could be really good at Instagram, right? If you are so good at Instagram that you are able to use that platform to, you know, grab this huge audience, right? That's giving you an advantage over other people. That's giving you a reach, right? Over other people. And that's an advantage, right? Or your, another advantage could be musical, right? You can be a really great singer and have a natural singing ability that's great. And that's a strategic advantage. But if you maybe don't have an advantage yet, maybe if you're looking at yourself like thinking, I really want to do music, I write songs, I play guitar, but I don't know if I have a strategic advantage in everything, then that's probably a good time to just take a look at yourself because you need to know yourself. You don't want to lie to yourself because at the end of the day, the industry and the market out there, the market for great music and the, the record labels that are looking for great artists, they're, they're going to do what they're going to do, right? If you kid yourself and then, you know, that's, where's that going to get you? So you have to be honest with yourself and take an honest look at yourself and say, look, do I have an advantage over anyone in any area, right? Am I a, an amazing guitar player? Am I an amazing songwriter? And if you if you can't answer yes to something, then that that's a that's a good thing because you realize that. So you know yourself. But secondly, that's an opportunity to really dig in, and make yourself good at something because having an advantage is going to be a, a, it's going to make a world of difference when you're trying to get noticed, right? Because there's a whole sea of great musicians, great songwriters out there. So give yourself a strategic advantage is really important. Remember how I was talking about how labels, they're not going to do the work for you anymore, right? If you're just going around asking, hey, you're looking for artists, you're looking for artists, you know, if, if, you're, uh, if you're just like uh, just going in hoping that someone's going to do something for you and pull you up when you're not even putting the hard work in, forget it. Because record labels need you to grow your audience on your own. If they're looking for an artist and they see artists A, B, C, D, E, F, right? And it's way more. There's hundreds of artists that they're looking at all the time, right? If you don't have a following that you've built on your own, forget about it. 
forget about it. They're not going to waste their time on a bad investment. They're not going to look at someone who doesn't play shows, who has a really small following, right? Who can't bring 10 people out to a show. They're not going to invest in that person because it's a bad investment. So whether you're investing in a business, you're not going to invest in a business that doesn't have a business plan. You're not going to invest in a business that doesn't have step-by-step -step process in how they're going to make money, right? And record labels, they only care about making money. That's just the fact of the matter. So if you show that you have a plan, that you grow your own audience all by yourself, that's going to give you a step up because they want to see from you that you are invested, first of all. And that's the easy part, though. A lot of people are invested in their own music, right? But they want to see that you are in it for the long haul, that you have a track record of grinding, track record of successful shows, a track record of successful campaigns, right? Whether you're releasing a song or whether you're promoting a show, those are all like little business campaigns. If you don't see yourself as a business, the music business is not going to want anything to do with you, okay? So grow your audience on your own. Please do not buy followers. It's so easy to tell when someone has bought followers, okay? If I could tell, the biggest record labels in the world can tell, okay? If I could tell, they definitely can tell. That is the single most way to, to just rule yourself out like that. Right? Shooting yourself in the foot. Yeah, you're shooting yourself in the foot by doing that. If you have 10,000 fans, but then I look at your first image and it has 14 likes, what is that telling me? That's telling me you're not doing the hard work, right? You're not building a real audience, right? And if you're just uh, trying to take the easy way when the music industry is so tough and it's so competitive and this is a dark time for the music industry right now, right? We have a hard time getting sales. Streams are throwing everything, you know, out the window of what we know, right? So if, uh, if, you, if you can't build your own audience, then they're not even going to consider you. That's just the sad truth. But grind, okay? That's no matter what industry you are, whether you're, if you're a film uh, guy trying to make your first movie, you have to grind promoting that movie. If you're making an album, you got to grind promoting that album, singles, music videos, everything. Build your own audience. So three, and this is a new one. This is, I, I'd say, on the cutting edge of the music industry because this is something I'm learning. I'm always learning. The music industry is always changing, and I'm just, uh, I'm just going to tell you what I truly believe in this because some people might disagree, but this is uh, just my true thoughts right here. So number three is, I say, don't record albums. I don't think there's a market for albums right now, especially as a, a, a new artist. So I'm, I'm kind of framing this from the view of you're an artist just starting out, right? So if you are, I'd say under, you know, 500 fans, right? Or let's, let's, let's put it in concert. So if you can't bring a hundred people to a concert yet, right? And that's hard to do. That's really hard to do. Mm -hmm. But if you can't bring a hundred people to a concert yet, I say, don't record an album. It's a waste of time. Okay. We, uh, we have the internet, okay? Wow. We have the internet. There, if you have a phone, you have a, a whole production studio. Let me see a phone. I need a prop. If you have a phone, this, this is not my pink phone. You have a whole production studio right here in your hand, okay? So instead of releasing albums and spending money and spending time and getting you know, five to ten tracks out. Here you go. Here's your phone back. I say instead of recording albums, release singles and release music videos. Okay, that's number three. Don't record albums, release singles and release music videos. Okay, so we're talking about the music industry. The music industry doesn't exist without music. You need to create music, right? But instead of investing time and money into an album, take that time and money, put it into the best single that you possibly can record and make the best music video that you possibly can on your budget, right? It could be with an iPhone. If uh, How many out there are on YouTube and Musical.ly and on these video sharing platforms, all right? If you have a phone, a YouTube account, or Musical.ly, or, or Instagram, you're on Instagram right now, obviously. Instagram is a great way to share everything that you do, right? Day to day, 
you should be sharing everything about your life, right? And then you should be publishing your music with video, okay? That's gonna be the best way to share your music. Yes, exactly, it's a visual world, right? So when you have the audience, right, where you can make money off of streaming a 12 track album, then great. I think that's a great time to have a product, right? Because an album is a product. So think of it as like a t-shirt, think of it as you know something that you need to sell to get money right because we all need to get money we all need to eat but if you're growing right if I was going to start you know a car business right I wouldn't go out and just make the car with no one to buy it right I'd have to have the buyers first and using YouTube and Instagram and musically and even snapchat to share your and Facebook thank you Facebook is a great one to share videos too. Share your songs in video form, right? Don't waste time recording an album, right? Because videos have a, a really long life. People want to see their music. Other than the Google search, YouTube is the most um, used search, right? And so if, you're, if your music is on YouTube, awesome. Share that, build up the subscribers, build up the views, right? And a record label is not even going to mess with someone who doesn't have you know, at least, you know, 100,000 views on a song, right? And we're talking about major record labels like Capitol Records, like... Number four, you need to be knowledgeable about the music industry, right? You need to be knowledgeable about the industry, right? The business market in which you're going to be entering, okay? So it's it's just a... It's a little bit of common sense, right? If you're going to enter the jewelry business, then you know about the jewelry business. If you're going to enter the car business, then you know how that works, right? If you're a musician, a lot of the reason why artists starve is because they don't know how to do the business part, okay? So a lot of people can make great art and be really great at something, but if you don't know the business about it, you'll never be able to turn it into a career. You'll never be able to monetize it. and let's get real. Maybe a record label will approach you and they'll say, you know, you have a great sound, but maybe it's not the right place or the right time. Maybe you're not the right look for us. There could be all of these other, um, all of these other variables that at the end of the day, you might just not get signed. And that is the story for so many people. And, or you might get signed and then you might get let go even worse. Right. And then you're in a place where, Okay, so I just got let go from my record label. How do I continue this career of music that I love so much? How do I continue this thing that I've spent X many years preparing for and and working with all my heart and soul on? And you have to be able to turn music into a business yourself. You can't rely on anyone else to do it for you. Just like point number one. I'm actually, I think it was point number two. No one's going to hold your hand and do it for you. They want to see that you're, you're capable. And they want to see that you have a knowledge and that you have an expertise in the industry. They will need to see that you're marketable. Oh, yeah. Gosh, they need they need to be shown that you're you're marketable, that you're a good investment, right? So if, you, if you're knowledgeable about the music industry, if you're knowledgeable about the, the place that record labels play, right? How do, how do record labels fit in into this giant music industry, right? How do songwriters fit in, right? Because you can be a performer and not a songwriter, or you can be only a songwriter and never perform, right? Or how do publishers fit in? How do you make money from publishing, right? And uh, man, a lot of people don't even know about publishing, right? Mm -hmm. That's a big area of missed money there. And you need to understand um, all the ways that money flows. You need to understand what a good record deal is and what a bad record deal is because there's nothing worse than getting signed and you're on top of the moon and then you realize that the label's taking 95% of everything. Number five, the fifth and final thing that every artist needs to do to get signed and then we'll go into your questions. Uh, the fifth thing, um, this one is probably the hardest thing and if you're not doing this thing, th you, there's no chance, okay? But as soon as I say this, you're going to be like, oh, I knew that. Like, I knew that. But it is so hard. So if, if you know this already, just listen and let this be inspiration to you, okay? 
But the fifth thing is that you need to perform your music weekly at least, okay? Perform your music weekly at least. But that doesn't really necessarily need to be live. You don't need to be in a coffee shop weekly. Or you don't need to be, you know, playing amplified music weekly. But there's so many of other ways, so many other ways to perform your music um, without being physically away from something, right? So if if you if you are working a job, this is actually a question I got earlier this week. They're like, how do I do music when I'm working a job? I mean, music is my dream, but I gotta make money. Well, just like how I'm doing it right now, I'm on Instagram Live, I'm using technology, I'm using my phone. My phone is a full production studio right here with audio and video built right in. And if, uh, if you use this, you could perform to an audience of people right here. Do a concert right here on Instagram. Do it live, okay? And Or do it pre-recorded if maybe you're still working on your guitar st skills or if you want to have a little bit of quality control of what you put out. That's fine too. Uh, if you um, have a digital camera, that's another great production tool right there. A lot of people have those um, and they're not expensive either. So if you're not performing weekly, either in person or on Instagram Live or on Facebook Live, if you're not performing weekly, then you're not actively pursuing a new audience, okay? And that is going to just ruin all of the other points that we've talked about today. Because if you're not uh, giving yourself an advantage strategically, right? If you're if you're not performing, because performing needs practice too. You need to practice performing. You need to practice how you play in front of other people because it's different when you're bedroom, you're practicing and you make a little mistake and you're like, oh, and you don't even realize that in your bedroom, you restarted the song five or six times. But when you're in front of an audience, you're forced to push through the end of the song and you're forced to recover from that mistake, right? And it's, it's different. It's another thing to practice. So you can practice your technical ability on guitar, your technical ability on drums or singing. But when you're in front of an audience, you need to practice being in front of an audience. And another kind of side note that we can take a whole you know hour to talk about is is the uh, the performance in between the music, right? So you could be a great performer, you could be technically perfect, um, but then in between songs, are you connecting with your audience? Are you um, giving the audience a taste of your personality? Are you giving them a behind the scenes of this guy on stage is awesome or this this girl sings amazing, but why? should I follow her when there's, you know, a whole plethora of amazing musicians out there too. So go to lionbull.com slash training. Um, you should be taken uh, to our training page and you enter your name and email. And that's, uh, that's going to add me. I have a, a list of everyone that I keep in contact with and I send uh, advice to, and I'm going to be sending um, this checklist that we just talked about the five things every artist should do to help them get signed. And so I'm going to be sending that to you. And once you have that, you can have it look it over. Um, this is, I guess, maybe like a bonus one. So number six. But once you get this email, um, open a Word document right next to it and make a, a little plan for yourself. Okay. Because in the music business, when record labels are looking at the business and they're trying to make money, and you're trying to fit into that, you need to have a business plan yourself, right? So when you are competing against all these other artists and when there's money at stake, you need to have a business plan. That's just the way it is. Now, you might be someone who's just like, oh, I just perform for fun, you know, and I just make music for me and I just make music uh, to fulfill my creative bone, uh, but um, I won't, it'd be nice to have it go somewhere it would also be fine if it never went anywhere, then I'd say just enjoy it because music is something that needs to be enjoyed. Um, don't let the business ruin music for you. Don't let um, anything discourage you. Um, but I think that a big part, <laughs> that's right. I think a big part of music too is always improving though because the fun in music, yes, is playing, but just imagine if you always stayed at the same level that you were at when you were six years old, or if you started music, right? And you're, you're learning the piano and you played Mary Had a Little Lamb. Just imagine if for 20 years you stayed at Mary Had a Little Lamb level, right? That's not fun. Part of 
the fun in music is getting better. It is evolving. And I think the music business can be fun to learn and can be fun to perfect.